Hello everyone, welcome back to QAB Box channel. So in this session today we are going to see what exactly we need to test in our API testing. Okay, so we have understood a lot of different things about uh, API like what is the structure, what is API, why do we need API and what is the benefit of uh, doing the API testing, right? So today we are going to so, see that what are the different things that we need to test in API okay so we understand that how to test into the ui testing right like let's say facebook.com so we know how to test the login valid invalid or like certain user actions on the browser screens but api is something which is non ui right like you don't have any structure or anything or any user actions needs to be tested there it's more into the back end stuff right so that's what i kind of gathered couple of points that will be help us to understand more what are the components that we need to test in the API and it is applicable for both manual and automation testing okay so let's get started okay so the first and foremost thing is that you need to gather all the API calls from the product or the dev team in the sense let's say that there are like hundreds of api calls that your particular product or software is using that so your first thing is that you have to gather all those api endpoints or we call it as api calls whatever it is there whether it is get post patch or delete whatever those calls you have to get it now the question comes how do we really get it there are two ways one is the uh, the earlier approach where you can have the documentation in terms of PDFs or what document where your architect or the developers would have maintained while developing the APIs or else recent uh, I mean in these days we, uh, they normally use the swagger documentation it's most popular uh, tool actually on the market where it lists out all the API calls with a proper structure actually so for this let me just show you there is a swagger uh, sample project which is coming from the swagger itself let me just quickly go through the uh, points to just make you guys feel what is exactly the swag how exactly the swagger looks like so you see this is something uh, the swagger looks like uh, and it would be like your organization dot swagger dot com or something they will be giving those uh, links to you now this is basically generated by your architect or the developers while they will be developing their uh, API development okay so you will see different calls so let's say that for this uh, this is a pet store project this pet store pr uh, project has couple of endpoints and uh, some of them are post calls some of them are put calls get delete and you can see they even list out with the different nice colors so that uh, visually you can get it what exactly those calls are and then each of this call has a parent a base uh, UI will be there or the base url will be there and after that so think about the base url could be petstore.swagger.io slash v2 slash and then it would be like pet pet id and uh, upload an image so let's say you want to upload an image to your application then you can use this endpoint post endpoint where you can see even what are the different things that you need to use this api call see each and every api call has some kind of a payload will be there or else some kind of authentication will be there or some query parameters all those details will be mentioned in this documentation so this is really a nice documentation format i would say not just the documentation but it even gives you the structure how it would look like when you really go into the testing and it is for debugging purpose also let's say that there is some issue is coming where your developer and tester both can really follow this particular documentation so this would be like staying as a reference document for the entire team so okay but the scope of this particular session is not about the swagger but i wanted to showcase that this is the starting point where you can gather all of your endpoints related to your software okay so that is one thing we might be having a uh, separate session on this how to really utilize this swagger so stay tuned for that okay so now let's get straight into the api testing okay so for each api call i mean whether it is get put po uh, post or like let's say delete there are two things that you have to test always okay 
so one is the desired status code we know right http status codes like we have 200 300 400 500 like this some series of uh, calls status codes are there so your first approach would be you have to first uh, what do you call validate the desired status code if it is a get call you have to get the 200 if it is like let's say some kind of post call then you might need two not one like that you you have those documentation right so based on those documentations you can just get into the validation fine so the second criteria is that or the second component that you need to test is the response time getting that response from the server from the application server normally uh, treated as the response time so for each and every endpoint there is a setting i mean depending on the complexity the architect should have uh, maintained the response time whether it would take one second or some like let's say 500 microseconds and all those details you can can gather again from the team itself so that is what you need to test it fine so i'll show you one quickly one postman uh, stuff where you can come to know that how do you really test the status code and response time so let me take a quick example here so if you go to this get call so this is basically i'm taking a go rest dot co dot in so which is a particular platform which is giving you the sample api calls where you can uh, use all of those http methods inside this these are fake data but then it gives you a correct or a, a correct response and uh, the what you call code and everything so I have taken a simple get call where it will be taking first the a particular user and after that it will get the posts all the posts that is posted by this particular user okay so there are some certain JSON data is already fed into the backend okay so now let me run this particular uh, what you call get call and show you that so I am running that and as you can see that it is going within 200 it is giving the status code and then the millisecond is 127 millisecond see in reality i cannot test the exact time it is taking like the architect or the developers cannot tell us that this particular request will take exactly the same uh, time that's why what we can do is that uh, here I have written certain script so postman allows you to kind of validate those uh, uh, endpoints as well so I have written a kind of a script javascript you need not to worry about this at this moment uh, just understand that I have written certain script to check these things in our upcoming sessions we will see in detail how do we really pitch into these test cases but as you can see here uh, I have written that the response time should be below 300 because see I cannot maintain that it should be exactly 150 or 127 milliseconds there are a lot of things that is uh, what you call uh, parameters are depending like uh, your application server how it is responding your internet connection or the client that is sending the request a lot of different parameters are depending on this so that's why I'm making sure that this particular request based on the complexity this is to be below 300 millisecond and which is coming here you can see it is giving the entire uh, what you call the flow that is happening to get the response and then the response code is 200 and you can see the pm dot response to have a status of 200 like that you can write the test actually here and also you can see here it is giving you the test result as well like you can see the response time is less than 300 millisecond which is passed the status code is 200 yes it is 200 and you can see two test cases are passed now this particular script we can use in any of the calls whether it is delete or get call put call patch call now here we need to validate the business logic which is our main intention right like each and every api call is meant or whatever the api calls we have uh, developed based on setting uh, what you call business logics right we have already discussed this one in our previous session where the benefits of api testing that for each business logic like uh, let's say that if i'm taking a facebook.com then sending a friend request so those things are nothing but the business logic and for all of these functionalities there is an api call developed actually 
so we have to validate all those things mostly in all of the different domains whatever product you are like designing or you are developing there would be a crud operation right like uh, crud means create then read read is nothing but get the information update and delete i'm taking an entity as a as a global object i'm not making uh, too much particular to any domain like if it is e-commerce then you can create a order actually there if you are talking about uh, your twitter let's say that so twitter what is the create entity where you are getting basically you are uh, posting something okay onto your feed so like this so i'm talk i'm talking that as a generic as an entity okay now creating an entity using a post call so it's very generic that post calls are basically to create something into your database okay so that is what we need to test it uh, and then again the same thing uh, you can do the uh, status code and then the response uh, uh, what do you call response time along with that you can do the response body as well what is response body Th there is 2094 and which is post here if i am hitting this this get call you can see for this particular user 2094 there are only one post available you can see there is only one post available now if i am doing a post call here now you can see the same 2094 i am sending a post where the post should have some body so that it will be posting into that user so i am doing a post call now and as you can see it added actually that so this response actually i need to validate it as per this component testing what it is telling is that creating an entity where i have to verify the response body so here how can i response body because see i have this title i have this body which i have sent as an input now the same text or the strings i can test it in my response body as well don't worry at this moment how to test it just think about in a manual perspective where you are sending a particular key value pair in terms of json the same data you will make sure that if it is really a appearing into your post body or not you can even verify by doing a get call so before you can see i have only one data set right now if i'm running this i will be getting two set sub data this is my existing set of data after the post call i have got another post where the id is 1108 after that the same uh, for the create entity or the post call you have different types of combinations are there so like this is a simple way where i have shown that you just taken the title and body and you are doing this but in reality uh, in real time applications based on different sets of data your response should be different for an instance let's say that you are dealing with a admin and user privileges different type of accesses are there think about that now in that case a user will have a different like if i'm sending the user data to add an entity you will get a different response if i want to send a admin i want to add a, an user as an admin you might get a different response data so those things we can test it now deleting an entity deleting an entity is very much uh, understandable let's say that at this moment i have two entries are there right for this 2094 user think about that i am deleting this user let's say that i am going here and i am deleting this 2094 okay now i am doing a delete call with the same user you can see 204 no content it means that there is no content left after deleting this now the same thing let me go to the get call for this 2094 and i will send this and you can see the call got successful with 200 i got it but you see that the data is blank it means that that user is deleted like that you can test it so before there was some data now there is no data like that you can test it for the delete endpoints update an entity this is again like let's say this is normally we call it as a put call in this put call you can even go with that so i can real quick show that to you guys uh, let me get a particular user from the database uh, let's say that 20998 so this is my one of the user id now let me take a put and it is 2098 right so i am doing a post call here or maybe let's say that i am changing this particular user itself only 
so let's see what are the user data is there okay name is there right let me change this name to something else so i will do a put call and here i will put this name okay saving it and then posting it and you can see it becomes successful and you see before the name was something else actually here you can see now after i did a put call you can see the name got changed now when i do a get call for this particular user this 2098 i should be seeing a different name let me do that uh, i will do like this 2098 and let me send this and you can see whatever in this put call i have changed it in my input now in the real time database i am getting the same data only here so that is how you can update the data also okay the same thing like update an entity you can have different types it's not just limited to name uh, attribute only inside this you can see you can change name email gender status all these things can be changeable there is something called as a get call and we have already seen this like get call here uh, you can have a get call is uh, there are a lot of th things you can do in the get call in fact i would say that for each and every other calls like put post delete for everything you can test by using this get call like let's say you have added an entity by using post call you can go to the get call you do that get call and make sure that you had couple of entities were there you have done a post call now come back and re-execute your get call you will see there is an entity added before maybe there were 10 entities were there after post call it become 11 so those things you can test it there okay like one of that example i have shown here uh, not exactly this but let me do like this so you see that here you have one set one set of data is there you see this data is having one set okay square bracket in the json means that this data is holding array of data at this moment it is only one only okay so whenever i will execute this you can see that your test name so this is one only but when i am adding a new request let me show you that real quick so this is 2098 right i will do a post call to this 2098 and let me save and do a send call now you can see there is a new data added so now in this case you see the data is having only one call now when i call this one right get call i will see two but here i am saying that i should be seeing only one data only you see data count dot length equal to one this data count is nothing but how many array objects you have at this moment i have said one that's why my test case is passed but i did a post call right it means that now this data is holding another sets of data let me do a get call and you see the test case got failed okay you see that that the expected is two but one is coming in the sense expected in the sense uh, expected is one because i am expecting this as one but actually it is coming two so this data count dot length appeared two you can see there is one one set and there is another set like that you can do so what you can do at the beginning of the uh, before doing a post call you can make it as one make sure that there is only one entity you do a post call come back to this get call and change this to two so that your test case will pass like this you can play with the test script and you can make it pass fail and all those things or else you can even copy paste the same uh, request below to this post call now when you execute this entire collection first it will result as one set of data do a post call now in the second get call you make it as two we will see how to make the chaining of this uh, what you call uh, chaining of this request and uh, you can have combinations of different http methods and execute a whole set into this fine so now we have got the business logic or the crud operations how to test it with different type of http methods so these are more into the positive scenarios right like the, your your actual functionality you are testing whether these are working fine or not and in every testing we do we should have some kind of negative testing as well right to make sure that uh, we are testing the risk based scenarios as well okay or the odd behaviors as well so 
I have listed out couple of negative testing scenarios with respect to the API. One is wrong endpoint. In this sense, let me go to a get call. So here, this has to be the URL. In this sense, we want users. There has to be a valid user actually. Let's say I'm giving an invalid user, which is not in my database. So this has to be the posts, right? I'm deleting the S actually from here. Only post I'm taking. And you can see 404 not found. So some kind of problem you are coming. You can see here it is giving page not for found actually. In the sense this particular request whatever we are hitting there is no endpoint related to this. Sometimes you will get a different error depending on how the application is designed because you will have those uh, what you call uh, endpoint I mean for the wrong scenarios what would be the uh, status code you can get that from the uh, from your developers or from your business and you can verify that so this is uh, giving a wrong endpoint now another scenario is that uh, wrong or missing headers so for each and every endpoint we have seen that there will be certain header headers will be there key value pairs one of them is authorization so this particular endpoints whatever we are hitting like in the ui testing you need to enter the username password right the same thing these endpoints are very much uh, you need to authorize yourself so let's say that the bearer token uh, i mean for this particular endpoint i need to have the authorization as bearer token now let's say I'm giving a wrong bearer token in this sense let me give a different header actually here let's say that I'm giving like this and I'm doing a post call and you can see it is throwing you 401 unauthorized means the authorization is not correct this is very similar to like if you are giving a invalid credential to your application that is how you can test it here you can give content type into something else and you will see whether your endpoint is working fine or not so like these things you can do it let me correct it okay fine okay so wrong or missing headers like if there is authorization is required now don't give the authorization and see that whether this endpoint is really working fine or not for the post call let's say that i'm not giving the authorization itself i'm disabling the authorization and I'm sending a call. You can see you are getting an 401. It means that your application is behaving correctly. Incorrect authorization, like I have given that already. A record that doesn't exist, like I did that, right? I'm using a different uh, ID actually here. This ID is not existing to my database, but I'm trying to hit to that and I'm getting the data as null. Okay, like that you can get it. A body that has a missing required fields. For an instance, I'm doing a post call here, okay? In this post call, let's say that these two things are mandatory to have that post call, but I'm not giving these things. And let's see what happens. So depending on what would be, for each and every negative scenarios, the developers would have maintained certain error codes and certain uh, messages. We call these things as status code and you can see this is message. So 401 is my status code unauthorized is my message and this is my time actually the response time so based on those details you will validate with their uh, these are nothing but see required fields let's say you are going for a registration form you are doing a post call to register something there actually let's say your username is mandatory but you are not giving the username inside your payload inside your input now let's see what error it is giving it should not give a success message it should give some error by saying title is required or body is required so all those things you need to test it by having some permutation combinations of different uh, payload data a body that has invalid field values for an instance let's say that this title key is a string actually here you need to provide a string but you are giving some kind of integer or let's say float values okay in or let's say there is a boolean key see in json you need to understand this one for e these are jsons right so each json key will have a specific uh, what do you call value type is assigned for an instance let's say this is a big json right i can explain here let's say pages now pages always accepts integers only let's say you are giving like a zero as a wording like j g e r o you are giving 
and you need to see that in the input in the body you need to give the invalid type to your key values and you need to see what kind of error you are getting now based on those errors you need to make sure that your ui also will be reflecting because see the developer would have first designed for each and every error types how would actually the response will come based on this response the front end developers will design that for an instance let's say that uh, again into the registration page if i'm giving the username password your address and everything now the username i'm giving as blank now here in the response it will throw an error by saying that username field is required now by reading this response your front end developer will write a code where in the ui actually you see that red error there that username is required that's why in the previous session we have discussed right api testing is very much required because this is the baseline that the front end will take care of that take this data and then will design the front end uis or the browser actions what would be there let's say that you are using a date field i mean there would be a date field here let's say that uh, expired date for some products and you are giving the date as integer here it will not accept right it has to be a date format there has to be a created time let's say that uh, created at so it's a time format so you have to give the time format there so these are kind of different what do you call body that we need to play with that and these are mostly dealing with when i'm saying invalid field values these are mostly related to your post calls because a post call will have the json body right okay so these are the pretty much different things that you need to keep it in mind whenever you are doing an api testing the postman i have used here to kind of what do you call make you visualize or feel what kind of testing we can do only theories if i discuss it might not be valuable for each and every one but yes we will be using the postman along with that even you can use the same concepts into your automation testing which we will see in our upcoming sessions so hope this particular uh, what you call components or whatever the learning that we are doing which would help you to kind of understand your own api calls into your product and you can be in a position to take up certain task from your team and then uh, you can even suggest also what are the things missing what are the things you can add value to the product okay so fine so stay tuned uh, because we will be seeing some more interesting topic into this api testing so thank you for watching.